Hello guys, welcome to Easy TV Presents Tech View, another episode. Today I'll um, discuss about uh, physical server firmware update. So <clears throat> what kind of physical server actually? So most of the organization, um, they use Dell um, PowerEdge Direct Server or maybe HP Server, HP uh, ProLamp Server, or maybe Cisco UCS Server. So those three servers is very famous in, um, uh, like most of the organization, they use it. Um, so today I'll show you guys actually how you can apply firmware update on Dell PowerEdge server. And uh, why you need the firmware update? Because um, if you have if you have a plan to, um, like it's, it depends on, um, it depends on different, different situation. So for example, if you want to upgrade your, your VMware ESX environment, so if you want to upgrade from ESXi 6.7 or 6.5 to ESXi 7 version, in that case, you have to, first you have to apply firmware update. You have to make sure you have your firmware update, if firmware is up to date. And also uh, there is no, uh, like far more release fixed schedule date and time. Uh, it depends on the manufacturer like Dell or HP or Cisco. So most of the time Dell, HP, they release um, sometimes um, like yearly or year and a half or sometimes uh, every six months, it depends. So you have to look for it, which version is running. <clears throat> And also I show you guys actually how you can accomplish this task uh, to apply the firmware, how you can do that on a physical server, but everything you can do from remotely. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. All right. So how are you gonna do that? So the first thing is you have to download you can um, you can download some exe file or something um, like uh, based on the component of the server, like for memory, for um, your BIOS, everything you can download separately, but that will be a lot of work for you and it's complicated. So in that case, what you can do, you can download a platform specific um, bootable ISO. It's a complete package ISO file you can download from the uh, Dell, but you don't know actually which platform specific bootable ISO you should download, right? So in that case, what you can do, uh, you don't need to memorize anything. Just open your browser, go to the Google and type Dell PowerEdge with your model number, firmware, ISO, or whatever. You can, you can sort it in different, different way, but you don't need to memorize actually how you're gonna do that, right? So you can just type, because this is a Dell PowerEdge server, so you can mention PowerEdge and then your model number, and then of course a firmware because you are going to do firmware update. And and we are looking for ISO file. So if you do like this and search it, then you will get a link, some YouTube video link, and also there will be some other links. There's a lot of links like related to the firmware update and from different different websites. But we are not looking for other companies' website. We're gonna look for the Dell website. So the first one, which one come is gonna come this one. So here's the link, and I have a complete uh, documents I will share. So you can just click on this one, and then it, uh, like you can just right click and open new tab, and that's how you you'll, you'll get this one. So it will open like this. So this is called update uh, PowerEdge server with platform specific bootable ISO, and from here if you can look at like previously before to March 2022, <clears throat> there was a different system to download the ISO file. You can directly download the ISO file, but right now they'll change their system. So from March 2022, the previous system not gonna work out anymore because it's gonna work out if you can download, but maybe you have to research more to download the specific ISO file. From the from the Dell website, so now Dell make it more easier. What's the easiest thing? 
So they release another software, which is called, so that's why they said starting in March 2022, platform specific bootable ISO will be transitioned to Dell Repository Manager 3.4 or greater. So they release another tool, which is called Dell Repository Manager and version number 3.4, current version. And maybe if uh, maybe after one year or maybe after three months, they can release another version. That's not a problem. So how you get this software? Here's the link. See here, it's a link. So what is software called? They said using DRM. DRM means Dell Repository Manager, DRM. To prepare the bootable ISO will use the latest comments of the Dell or same include whatever. So you need the link. So you just need to click the link or you can just right click on it, open a new tab. So that's how I get this one. So when you get this one, see here, it's gonna, it's gonna look like this. Dell Repository Manager DRM. So you have to go down and there is some other process. Maybe you can read, I didn't read it. So you can maybe go and get it from here or also somewhere place, some other place. Uh, so the number two, Dell Repository Manager resource download and DRM download link. So if you right click on it, open a new tab, and you're gonna get this one. This one, the version, Dell EMC Repository Manager, port uh, uh, B3.4.2. This is the version. So, and also you have to mention from here, like if you have a plan to install Windows operating system on this physical machine, in that case, you have to select what actually, what do you wanna do? So our plan is to install ESXi. So that's why it's just to be compatible with the ESXi. So that's why I choose this one because they have on the up to 6.5. It's, it's not gonna be any issues. Select it, submit, uh, submit it, and then you're gonna get some other link. So which available forms. So if you just expand it like this, available forms and application, DRMA installer, this, this version, File size is not that big, it's 324.65 megabyte. And click download. When you click download, it's gonna be um but it, it can be ask you for the location where you should save it, or maybe it's gonna download automatically. If it is happen automatically, that means it's gonna save on your download folder. So if I go my download folder, it downloads, I uh, downloaded um here somewhere, uh, this one, DRMI install on this. So, and then right click on it, run as administrator, install on your laptop, install on your laptop. But this is not a good or wise idea to download this one here. Yeah, you can download here or or you can download on a, your jump machine, whatever. But sometimes your jump machine, if it is a server, there will be some policy and maybe from your organization, Thus, whenever you access a server, maybe on the browser, you cannot have like outside internet. You have internet, but you cannot maybe browse the outside website. In that case, you can install on your laptop, your working office laptop, okay? So you can install it. Whenever you install it, even and you're gonna get it like this. Let me show you. Uh, I have a lot of things open. All right. So it's gonna download somewhere like this um, here. Dell EMC repository manager. So double click on it, then it's gonna open like this. When it's open like this, so this is the tools. Previously, how we download it? Previously, we always download from the Dell website. Now you don't need to. If you have these tools, you don't need to go Dell website and search the ISO. You don't need to do that. You just need to do what? If you have this repository manager, the Dell, um, Dell EMC repository manager. Then you just need to go uh, flat from bootable because we are looking for flat from bootable ISO, right? So click on here. Uh, now it's not working for me because I already downloaded a copy. When you download here, it's going to looking for a location where you want to save it. So I showed uh, here uh, on my C drive because it's installed, my, when the tools is installed on C drive. So if I go to my C drive, you, you're gonna see here is a um, folder created EMC. 
So on the EMC, I, I, sh I, I showed the location EMC and it's downloaded. So from these tools, actually I need, I need to close it. I want to show you guys actually what's happened. So we open it, double click on it. Just wait a little bit. It should be open, okay. It takes a little bit time. Don't click two, three times, okay? So now it's highlighted, see here? If you click here, bootable, it's gonna be load. <coughs> And then it's loading. All right. So it's loading, right? And then choose your uh, model number, whatever the model number you have. So in my case, mine is um, R620. Uh, where is R620? R720. So maybe it's R620. So it depends on your model, which model you want. And then choose location. That means where you want to save this ISO file. See here, this is the ISO file, right? If you select this one, it's gonna be show you this one. If you select this one, it's gonna be show it's different. See, it's changing based on your uh, server model. Okay. And the location is that means where you wanna save it. You can save it any place on your computer, like on your desktop, on your download folder, on your C drive, whatever. So I choose like this, it's automatically redirect to me the CEMC, but you, you can change the location. So I just select this one and I said open and create. When you say create, and then you're gonna see nothing happen. Look like it's nothing happened, but actually on the background is downloading the ISO for you. But I'm not doing this right now because it's already downloaded for me. And you just, so when you create, click the create, it's gonna look like, like this. Nothing gonna happen. Like you, you're gonna seem like nothing happened, but actually something is happened on the background. So you have to wait like maybe five to 10 minutes. After that, check the folder and you wanna see here, it's downloaded. And this file is not that big, it's I mean, one point something gig, 1.7 gig. All right, so now what are you gonna do? You need to, now you need to log into your um, iDrive, whatever the server. So this is my one of the server I already applied. So my latest version is 2.65.65.65. And I have another server, but this one has 2.63, 60, and 62. So that means this machine is not up to date. I need to apply the path, uh, firmware update on this server, which is my IP, which is IP address is eight. And I believe you guys know how to log in, right? I'm just going to log out and log back in. Again, so just show you guys. So you just need to type your um, IDRAC IP address and then root and then uh, password, the, the um, uh, what is called? Um, the default password is uh, for all the Dell IDRAC is Calvin, C-A-L-V-I-N, you guys already know. And then you can submit. So this is my demo lab, so I don't care actually what is the password. The default is, if default is, is fine, but for your natural, you need to change it. All right. So now what are you gonna do? You have to launch the console. Launch the con console. So launch the console. So the console is loaded because my server is powered off right now. And what do you need to do? You need to connect, connect the virtual media. So if you click connect virtual media, and then from here, map CD or DVD. So choose, and you know where you download it, right? So I downloaded on my C drive here, EMC, and this one, right? And open. So it's gonna be uh, the, the, the raw file, the ISO file is on my laptop. My laptop is running Wi-Fi. My laptop is running Wi-Fi. So actually this is not the good idea, but this is a demo that's what I'm doing for my laptop. But I am highly recommended you, after you download the file on your local laptop, just move this file, just copy this file to your jump machine. The machine is on your environment. So that's how that machine is always available. And also that machine is 
because if it is a virtual machine, that virtual machine is sitting on some ESXi and that ESXi is physically connected with your local office network, right? So that means it's physical connection. Ne network wise, you're not gonna have any interruption. And also, because this process, when you start this process, it's gonna take one hour time. So in the meantime, if you run from your laptop and for some reason, after 30 minutes, the process is still working, like it's in progress, like 50% completed or maybe 30% completed or maybe 70% completed in the meantime, you shut down your laptop or your laptop disconnected with the Wi-Fi, you have to start from the beginning again. So that's why I'm highly recommend that move the ISO file to your um, jump machine. It can be a virtual or it can be physical, any jump machine on your environment. And from there, open the browser and log into your I, uh, ILO or IDREC and then, sorry, not ILO, IDREC, and then go to the uh, launch uh, launch the console like this and map the drive with the ISO and you can close it. Now, see here, virtual media connected device one, ISO mapped CD-ROM. So it's, it's connected now, right? All right, so now I need, what I need to do? So this is my basically, this console is basically monitor. Now I need to power on, right? So power button is here. If I do power on and click OK, and now open again, open the console. And I don't know, you guys are hearing the sound. So I'm doing remotely, but I have the server in, inside my room. Anyway, so this is how it's going to work like this. So it's working, server is just booting right now. <coughs> Sorry. So now F11 BIOS boot up, right? F11, from your keyboard, click F11. So now entering BIOS boot manager and wait, it's gonna take a little bit time. In the meantime, I'm saying like, if you have these repository tools, then anytime you need, you just need to come here and download, that's it. And this process will take one hour uh, approximately. And again, this is highly recommended. Do this process through your jump machine, not from your laptop, because anytime your laptop, because laptop is maximum time connected with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi can be disconnected anytime. So we are just waiting for some options. pretty slow responding. Actually, yeah, the server bootable time, like it's always look like this.
So my uh, my ISO file is still connected. <coughs> so when you guys watch this video, maybe you can just forward it because because I'm I have to wait it and. All right, so now you have some options, which one you're supposed to select, right? Continue normal boot, BIOS boot menu, and UEFI boot menu. So you should always go with this BIOS boot menu. So click this one, and then it will take, it's gonna scan again, and it will show you actually what, from where you wanna, uh, from where you wanna boot. So I'm gonna boot from my virtual CD, right? Because this is not the actual CD. It's, it's a virtual to the iDrive console, right? So I added the ISO file on the uh, virtual CD DVD, right? So you should select this one. So from your keyboard down arrow, go down and then select virtual CD and then hit enter. And then it's gonna start booting from your uh, virtual CD, right? And now it's waiting for your, instru your instruction, bootable ISO file. So we have to hit one, number one. If you don't hit number one, it's gonna by default start loading. So it's gonna wait for you 10 seconds. See here, auto boot to option one after 10 seconds. So I didn't hit anything, that's why it's starting boot one. So now it's working, it's, it's loading the files. So this process, whole process will take approximately one hour. So I don't wanna keep this video one hour longer. So maybe I'll do some pause and I'll come back and I'll pause it like this. So do some pause right now. So it's still working. Uh, in the meantime, we can we can see one thing just for you understanding. So the version right now we have, see, remember on IP number eight, the iDRAC we logged in, it has a farmer versions 2.6360 and 62. So for our node, I'm just going to take a screenshot of it to just validate actually this server is updated so i'm going to i'm going to oh if not if it is not just give me a second let me take another screenshot okay hopefully it's gonna work now all right so we have a record here see eight and this is this is what our old version and now we are applying the firmware update and after the update we're going to verify actually what is what's happened so it still is working so it look like something happened yeah so something is running right starting detection Mount this, this, this. It's working. But again, I said it's going to take one, one hour approximately. So maybe 10 minutes, like five to 10 minutes already done, right? Still, you have to wait 50 more minutes. So it's just a wedding time, wedding game. So um, maybe I'll, I I want to skip those wedding time. All right. Um, I just present this video and come back because it takes almost um, more than forty minutes. In the meantime, it's like all the operations you guys see on the previous screen is done by automatically. 
Um, so finally, we have successfully upgraded the system with the IP address is eight, and now it's upgraded to 2.656565. So you can get it with the previous screenshot, which I've been taken before this update. It was the IP address eight, and before it was 2.63.6060. And now it's updated to 6565565. Make sure that we tried to update, right? So finally, we successfully updated. Um, thank you. Thanks for watching this video. And if you like this video, and also if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And um, also don't forget to click the bell icon to get my uh, next video. Um, thanks again.